Hey folks, Nass here. I've got another Medieval Dynasty tips and tricks guide for you. Uh, in this guide, we're actually going to be covering several early game tips. Uh, that way it'll help you advance in your dynasty uh, with a lot better ease. So let's get into this. So once you build your own house in the game, your house is going to have some beds in it. Now the beds will give you an option. Actually, they'll give you two options. So if you open up the sleep menu, you can see that we get sleep next day. And then we also get sleep next season. But my sleep next season won't be available for another 23 hours and 47 minutes in game. So you have to spend at least three full days in game in the season to be able to sleep to the next season. Now, the only way to get around that is if your seasons are less than three days. Also, if you're out and about, you can actually create a campfire right over here. So look, let me get back out of that. So you go to hand, excuse me, you go to your crafting wheel, which is Q. You go to Furnitures and Decoration, and then you scroll over here to Campfires. And you can craft a campfire, even the smallest one, right there. You can light the campfire. It will give you an option to craft. If you just tap E, you can craft. Or you can actually hold E, and it'll give you the option to sleep the next day. Now, the campfires will not give you the option to sleep the next season only the day. All right, so when you first start your game and stuff, money is always uh, a concern and a need because uh, there are definitely items in the game uh, that you would definitely want to acquire uh, as early as you can and you need to have a coin to actually purchase those items because you won't be able to craft them yet. Uh, so going around and picking up your sticks and your stones uh, off the ground and everything is going to allow you to open your is going to allow you to craft things from your personal crafting wheel. So you hit Q to open your personal crafting wheel, and you can actually come over here to hand crafting, and you can craft any of these items here to sell. So some of the the more popular and more lucrative items are going to be the stone knife. The simple bag, so if you've hunted a few animals or something and you have some leather on you, you can craft a few of these simple bags. The wooden spear, you can actually chop down trees to your heart's content and turn those logs into wooden spears. And then, of course, you could try to do the wooden shovel now because you, you, you couldn't craft the wooden shovel in your personal crafting wheel for a long, long time. This is just a new, a recently new item. To the game so you can actually do the wooden shovel you can do the hoe you can do the the stone pick uh, you can do any of the items in the personal crafting wheel and do multiple of them and then you can come over here to a vendor and actually sell those items to make you some quick coin so we'll talk to uh, the bar lady here show Only me your wares here. We'll go into tools because that's what we crafted now I've got a bunch of tools here but there's our stone knife uh, now, I have barter uh, turned on right now, but typically your stone knife is 20 coin if you don't have barter. So a stone knife is actually pretty good to sell. Now, we also crafted uh, a few other items like the simple bag. Uh, you can see the simple bag for me right now is 35 coin. Now, granted, I think the simple bag is 25 coin uh, without barter on. So again, that's a, a nice little chunk of change. There's, you know, 45 coin right there just with two items. Uh, we crafted the wooden shovel. You can see for me, it's 17 and a half coins. I want to say it's 12 and a half coins without barter on. Uh, we've got the wooden spear, which is 14 coins. I think it's 10 coins without barter on, but still, you can craft whatever item you can craft in your personal crafting wheel uh, to make a little extra a coin very early in the game. Now, you can also find the uh, abandoned carts and the abandoned uh, bandit camps around the map early in the game. Now, bandits won't enter your game until sometime of year two. 
So if you're very early in the game and you come up on a bandit camp, you do not have to worry about bandits being in it if you have bandits turned on in your game uh, because they won't be there until year two. Now, year two and beyond, you'll have bandits in your game and a bandit camp may actually have bandits in it. It may not be abandoned, so be careful of that. Uh, but you can actually get items from those loot carts and the abandoned camps. There are sometimes bags and barrels around these bridges that are around the map uh, with items in there. And you can actually sell those items to make quite a bit of coin to buy better tools and weapons and uh, more bag space early on in the game. So definitely go around and, and pick up your sticks and your stones and craft you some items and get you some coin going early in the game. Alrighty, folks, um, your wife, once you have a wife in Medieval Dynasty, can actually do uh, a few different things for you. So when you go in and talk to your wife, if your thirst is below 50%, if your hunger is below 50%, if your health is below 50%, she will actually give you items to help bring either of those statuses back up. So if you're thirsty, sometimes she'll give you juice. If you're hungry, she'll give you some type of food. If your health is low, she'll give you some type of item to help you bring that health back up. Uh, so whether it's an herb or a potion or whatever. So your wife can actually provide things for you that you need if she sees that. Also, if you go up and talk Hello, to your friend. wife, you can have her do a multitude of things. So you can actually look at her, her own stats and everything to see what she does and see what her mood is and things like that. But if we get out of that and go talk to her again, Hello. I have a favor to ask of you. So what you can do is choose number two. You can actually have your wife go to the Castilian and pay the taxes. Uh, if you have debt, you can ha ask her to take your debt money to the Castilian. When your herald enters the game and you're doing the king's requests or the king's quests, you can actually have her go tell the herald that you're ready to turn all of those items in and complete that that request from the king. You don't have to run all the way out to uh, Hornica or wherever the Herald is to tell him you have all the stuff. You don't even have to haul that stuff out there. You can just go to your wife and you can say, you know what, go inform the Herald that we're ready to fulfill the king's request. And she will do that for you. It's so helpful. You can also go to your wife and you can ask her how the kingdom is doing, how your little dynasty is doing, and she will give you little tips. There's not enough crafting resources in the village, which lets you know, OK, well, I've got to go find out what crafting resources uh, my people need and make sure that we have more of those. Um, you can, of course, you can talk to her and do romance. So if you're if her affection is dropping or anything like that. You can obviously talk to her and try and get that affection rating up. Uh, you can also ask your wife where you can find different items. So like farm animals, you can, whoops, you can, whoops, I double clicking that. Uh, but anyway, you can click farm animals and you can ask her where to find chicken or geese or pigs or sheep, goat, cattle, horses, donkeys, everything. And she'll tell you what village to go to. So like if we wanted to go find out where to get donkeys from, we can ask her that and she's going to say, oh, you got to go to Tutki to get donkeys. Great. We wanted to ask her where a vendor was. Where is a hunting vendor? There's the hunter, Lesnica, and Tutki. So that way you know where to go before you head out. This is a very valuable tool to use. Now, granted, I know it's kind of, you know, interesting to call your wife a tool, but, and, and you can take that in however sense you want. <laughs> but uh, go talk to your wife. Uh, she can tell you a lot of stuff. Of course, you can just do small talk or whatever. But the biggest thing is to tell you where you can find certain items. 
You can find out how your kingdom is doing, and you can ask her to go pay your taxes or go tell the Herald that you're ready to turn those quests in. And it saves you a ton of time because you don't have to go and collect all the items and then run over to whatever village you have to run over to. Saves you a ton of time. Now you can actually go and spend your time gathering those resources and making sure that your villagers have the items they need to craft the stuff you're wanting to sell. So, go talk to your wife. <laughs> well, congratulations, you made it about halfway through this video. If you found any of these items helpful in any way, make sure to click that like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you find yourself working through the night like I do, uh, you'll notice pretty quickly that it can actually be really dark in the game. Uh, especially if you are in, in the cave and you're working on mining some of that copper and tin. You can see that it is practically dark. I can't see a thing. Now granted, you can pull out your torch and be able to see. And if I have, let's see, do I have my pickaxe? There it is. Did my, there we go. So you can actually have your torch out with your pickaxe, as you can see. And you can mine whatever you need to mine. However, if you notice with the torch out, it's kind of hard to tell which is which until you come right up on it. So that one's tin and that one's copper. But with the color of the light, it's kind of hard to tell which is which unless you're just grabbing all of the tin and all of the copper or if you're specifically going after one item. It can actually be difficult to see until you come up on it and you could waste time trying to see, oh, which one do I want? Or is it salt or whatnot? But you can actually do a couple of other things. If I open my inventory and go to food, I've got a potion of night vision. So you, if you have a potion of night vision, this lasts for two minutes and it will actually temporarily improve your night vision or vision at night. Uh, so we can actually drink this. We'll consume that. We'll go back and you can see that it automatically started brightening up and we can see a little bit better. So we can put our torch away. Now, we can actually see where the copper and tin are. Eh, the tin's a little harder to see. But there's actually more you could do. So... If you go in to your settings, so you hit escape on your keyboard, you go to settings, go to graphics, you go to brightness, which is right here. You see the brightness? Take that all the way to 150 and accept changes. Now you can see already, before I even get back in the game, that it automatically lightened up quite a bit. So we get back out of that now. We haven't changed anything, and you can see very well. So with the night potion and then changing your settings, you do not even need a torch to come through this cave at all. You can see all the different ores, especially the copper and the salt, because it's almost like they glow. <laughs> but you can see stuff so much more easily, as opposed to what it was before. I mean, it was pitch black. So... Uh, even just changing your settings, not even the night vision potion. So here, let me, uh, let me let the night vision potion wear off. You can see it there in the bottom uh, left corner of the screen. I'll let that wear off and show you what it looks like with just the brightness turned up in the game. All right, so there we go. This is just the brightness turned up in the game. Now you can actually still see the copper. You can kind of see the tin. The salt is pretty, pretty visible if you're getting salt. But this actually gets you to where you're going. I mean, you can, you can see pretty decently with just changing the settings as opposed to not having the settings at all. And I'll go back and I'll change the settings again, go to graphics, go to brightness, and you can lower that brightness back to the 100, accept changes, and <laughs> we have a black screen practically. You can barely see the copper right there, but that is it. So you got a few options. The torch, that's the easiest because you're probably going to have a torch on you anyway. 
and you can use it while, you know, collecting your items. Uh, you've got the night vision potion and changing the settings. Now, I do change the settings quite often in my games. Um, and once you get used to using it, especially like in the cave, it's actually very easy. And if you have a night like this, <laughs> you pretty much don't need much of anything if you're out and about. Uh, but once you go into the cave, it just gets super dark. So uh, use your torch. You change the settings. Use a night vision potion if you have it. They're all very helpful to see items when you're working through the night. If you're new to the game and you have this little effect that has popped up down in the bottom left corner of the screen, you may be wondering, what is this? This means that you're dirty or stinky. And a lot of times villagers and NPCs won't talk to you if you are too dirty. They'll tell you you need to go wash or take a bath or you stink or something like that. So if you open up your inventory screen, right down here is your stinkometer. So you can see that I'm at 51% stinky or dirty. Uh, and it'll actually pop up when the effect pops up on your screen. It'll also say in the top left corner that you are dirty. Now there's a couple of ways that you can take care of this to get clean. One way is to actually craft yourself a wash tub. So you can actually open your crafting wheel. You can go to furniture and decorations. So you open your crafting wheel by pressing Q on the keyboard. Go to furniture and decorations. You can scroll down here to miscellaneous. You can actually see like the archery target and then there's the wash tub right there. So you can click on that. And there's the wash tub. It takes six planks. Now you make planks at your uh, woodshed or you can steal them or find them laying next to uh, abandoned carts sometimes out in the wilderness. But regardless, you need six planks to make a wash tub. So you can actually take that wash tub and maybe set it close to your house or whatever. Right there. There's a wash tub. Now, you can see that this wash tub is empty. It requires water. So you actually have to go and get you a bucket. I don't know if I've got any buckets of water in here. I do, right there. So let's take that. And we'll bring it out here. And it'll give you the option to fill it. So you hold E to fill it with your water. Tub. Water it says that it's 33% uh, full. So we got to go and get some more water. So let me get my bucket. Let me put my bucket in an inventory slot so we can actually go and get the water down here at the rear fill bucket. So we're going to fill the bucket and we're going to do this two more times. Just like that, we've got our wash tub full. We're at 100%. Now it gives us the option to take a bath. So you can actually hold E and take a bath. You can see it actually working and he's sitting there washing his hands and everything in the wash tub. I'm going to stop this a little bit early though because there is another option. So this is kind of cool to have in your village and stuff. It gives you another item to decorate your village with. It also gives you something close to your house or of course in my case the food storage to where you can actually wash up before heading to town. Something else you can do is if you're out running around and adventuring, you can literally just run out in the river and you saw that my icon disappeared. So walking through the river, as long as you get it deep enough, it will reduce your stinkiness. You can see my stinkiness now is at zero. So those are the two options that you have in the game to get clean. Uh, now, this big river runs through the middle of, of the map and everything. So if you're near this, this is obviously the best option to use. Just run out in the river, walk around in a little bit until your stinkiness goes away, and then you can go into town and talk to your people. But if you're out and about back up in here or something, or maybe over in here, this creek is not big enough for you to wash in. But if you have planks on you, you can actually make a wash tub and maybe place it outside of some of the different villages. That way you have a wash tub because once it's full, it's full. So that way you could fill it up with your water bucket or whatever, and you can have one outside all the different villages if you want. That way you could wash before going and talking to the vendors or the quest givers. But a wash tub or the river, 
That's how you're going to get clean. Alrighty, so I've got another cosmetic tip for you. Uh, again, this is purely cosmetic, but you can see all these little boulders that are out in front of me here. Let's say that you're building your village and you've got these boulders uh, out next to a building, but yet you don't want the boulder there. Now, granted, you may not be building anything on top of it. You just don't want the boulder there. What you can do is you can actually open your crafting wheel. You can go to road and you can go and take your road just on the other side of the boulder and start it. And then you can drag it across the boulder and then place the road. And you see that boulder goes away. Now, if I'm lucky, I have my uh, hammer on me. So you can take your hammer, you right click on your hammer to open up the hammer wheel and you go over to destroy. Now you can see the gravel road pops up. You can destroy that gravel road and that boulder is gone. So let me do that again. So you can actually take your uh, road. So Q to open your crafting wheel, go to road, place the road on the other side of the boulder, drag it across the boulder and place the road, cancel the road option. And then you right click with the hammer in hand. You make sure that you have it on destroy. The item will turn red just like it is in front of me. If it's in building mode, it won't be red. But if it, if you go into destroy, it'll be, it'll be red and it'll highlight and you just hit it and the boulder is gone. Just that easy. So, <laughs> so if you've got some of these boulders that are laying around your village and stuff and you kind of want to get rid of them, that is the way to get rid of them. Hit the road, drag it across, drop it, cancel the road, destroy the road. Boulder's gone. So we've literally just sat there and got rid of three boulders. Now, there are some people that have mentioned you can actually build the campfire. I don't know if I've got all the items to build the campfire or not. Um, I do have that. Now, the campfire, I don't know if it'll do that one. Let's see if the campfire will destroy this one. Then you can destroy the campfire. So the campfire works in the same way as the road does. However, if you're building a campfire, you're using resources as to where the road doesn't take any resources. You can just literally place the road. It doesn't use any resources, cancel the road and delete it. And your boulder is gone. So there you go. That's how you're going to remove these type of boulders. Now, if you walk up to it, I don't have any around me like I'm fixing to talk about, but if you walk up to it and it actually gives you an option to use a pick, you cannot delete that with the road. So it's just not a removable item. But these little boulders here, you can't do anything with them. Do I have a pick on me? I do. So I even have a pick on me. You can't do anything with these boulders. You can't hit them with the pick or anything. So by using the road, you can get rid of them. So here's two of them right here. And I, I may be too close. I'm too close to the roadway here. That's why I can't remove that one. Uh, let's see. Can we get a different angle on that? No, because the road is too far away. Let's see. Can I? Let's see if that's going to remove it. Hey, look at there. I was able to get close enough to the road to actually remove that one that was right next to the road. So then you go in with your hammer, which I had somewhere there. Right click, destroy the road. That boulder is gone. Alrighty, so there we go. That's how you want to remove those little boulders in your game if you get tired of having them around. Well, folks, this is going to be all for the tips and tricks guide today. If you found any of this information helpful, definitely click that like button. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video, there was clearly something you did like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. It greatly helps the channel out a lot. You'll also find the links to my Discord, Buy Me A Coffee, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, all down in the description below. So feel free to follow me at those locations. And we will see you folks in the next one. You take care and happy hunting.